Hello and thank you for tuning in to Here's to Your Health. I'm your host, Veggie Patty, and it is my pleasure to bring you the latest information on healthy living. On today's episode, we have Nancy Zack, who is the clinic administrator for the Wyandotte Clinic for the Working Uninsured. So welcome to the show, Nancy. Thank you. It's good to be here. So we wanted to talk about the clinic and let people know what the clinic is all about, who the clinic serves, what type of services you do provide, and then you also have a new event that's coming up that we're going to talk about Great. at the end. So tell us a little bit about the clinic, first of all. It's the Wyandotte Clinic for the Working Uninsured. So when did the clinic first start? The clinic first opened in September of 2005. We've been around for a while. We're one of Downriver's best kept secrets. We started um, talking about it when Dr. Bush became president at Henry Ford Wyandotte Hospital. And he wanted a project that would give back to the community and help people get access to health care. He saw in his private practice that patients um, were not coming in as regularly as they should for their prescriptions and sometimes ending up in the emergency room. And he wanted to give them uh, a venue for seeing a physician, getting their prescriptions, getting their blood pressure taken, and um, make it on a volunteer basis so it would be at no charge to the patient, a free clinic. So a lot of people were very interested when he brought it up, myself included, and I said, I'll help you with that. And he said, um, great, let's get going. So we planned for about a year before the clinic opened. And we opened finally, we just said, we're gonna do it, let's just get going and that was September 2005. We opened up in uh, one of the doctor's offices that had a similar clinic. It's, um, it was the MAPI Clinic, which is the Michigan Association of Physicians from India, and they're known throughout the country as doing a free clinic and giving back to uh, the community that they, that they work in. So we started it, but we found that there was not a um, place for people who were working they didn't qualify for any kind of federal or state assistance. So if you were working, you were just usually above the cut for getting um, some kind of uh, governmental assistance for mm -hmm. health care. But you didn't make enough money, often that's the case, to be able to afford doctor visits, diagnostic testing, and prescriptions. So that, that was the reasoning behind Dr. Bush opening the clinic and uh, he got a lot of support from the medical community and you know people who knew people who maybe were self-employed or part-time employed or even full-time employed. We were actually starting, we were doing this before it became the hot political issue that it is right now. Okay, well that's great and it's a much needed service because you know, a lot of times with healthcare, especially if you have a job and maybe insurance isn't offered through your job. Um, or you just can't afford the insurance because you have to pay so much of it. And unfortunately, these people then don't end up getting health care. They don't get preventative care. They end up going to the hospital when it's a real serious issue, which then usually ends up in them filing for bankruptcy because Often. they can't pay for those bills because it ends up being thousands of dollars. Right. So it's a really good service that you guys offer. So I want to talk a little bit about who exactly is the clinic for? Like, who's the target audience? So obviously, it's the working uninsured. So when you say working, what do you mean by that? Is it something that somebody has to have a full-time job? Can they be part-time? Can they be self-employed? How do you guys define working? All, all of those that you mentioned, they can be part-time, self-employed, full-time employed. They just have to sh either show a letter or... Um, a past income tax, the last year's income tax return, that they are working. Okay. And they have to be 18 or older. We don't mm -hmm. see pediatric patients yet. And uh, they need to uh, have no other insurance of any kind. Okay. Now, I know there's some, some people who are underinsured. Mm -hmm. We haven't been able to, to, to reach out to those people yet just because of the sheer volume of people who have right. no insurance at all. Right. So now when you say no insurance, um, what about people who, let's say they had another job and they have a new job with no insurance is offered, but they were eligible for COBRA, and unfortunately COBRA is so expensive they couldn't afford to pay for that. Do you still see them because they don't have insurance, or do they have to exhaust all other insurance options first? We see them right now um, okay. just because they have no insurance. Okay. I think as 
as time goes by and with the new exchanges that will be opening up, we'll be looking at those kind of criteria a little closer, maybe income levels, but right now um, the majority of patients that we see are working two or three jobs and they have no insurance. Okay. And then I know that there's a misnomer for some people that have heard of the clinic because it's the Wyandotte Clinic for the Working Uninsured. Some people think it's just restricted to Wyandotte residents, but that's not the case, correct? Correct. Interesting that you should mention that because soon we'll be changing our name to the Clinic for the Working Uninsured. Um, we'll, I think the name came actually from our affiliation with Wyandotte Hospital. Mm -hmm. They are a partner and it came from the medical staff um, president who was affiliated, of course, and it was his idea. So I think that's where the name came from. However, it's a lot to say and it's a lot to write and we'd like to shorten it up. Uh, we have patients that come from all over Wayne County. Okay, great. So with the clinic then, what type of services do you provide your patients? Well, we, um, we are a primary care clinic and we um, provide th your basic physical exam we check for blood pressure and diabetes, and um, we're not an emergency room mm -hmm. or even an urgent care center. We're trying to uh, sort of hone in on the, the common diseases that cause major impact, your most common um, factors in heart disease and diabetes and stroke, and try to prevent those. We're finding out that people who haven't been able to go to the doctor or didn't have access before end up much sicker and when they do go to the emergency room for care mm -hmm. and it's much more costly. So we're trying to prevent those things from happening. And I read something t just this week about there's approximately a million people in the state of Michigan with um, diabetes. Two thirds of the people know they have it and a third of the people don't. And I can't okay. tell you how many people we have have come into the clinic. They found their way, saying, "Oh, maybe some vague complaints about I feel tired or I'm thirsty, and you know, just a simple diagnostic, diagnostic test." And we find out that they're diabetic and they need to get it under control. Okay, so for somebody like that, um, you also help with prescription coverage, we, helping people get their prescriptions. You know, we do help um, in the way that we help is we as much as possible try to write for generic medication mm -hmm. which is the four dollar medications and most of the pharmacies participate with that if a person does better on a brand name medication uh, which is sometimes the case there is a consortium of the pharmaceuticals and it's called PPARX which is a prescription assistance program and they will uh, you have to fill out a little paperwork and so does a doctor but you will be able to get your medication without a charge. Okay, so you do the primary care, which is doing physicals. You do blood work as well with those physicals. Um, we do blood correct? work, however, whatever the doctor thinks okay. is appropriate. Um, we, of course, we we are grant funded. Well, I mean, we the way that we're funded is through grants, and we do a couple fundraisers and donations. But we we try to provide as much as we can. Okay. So now as far as the staff at your clinic, so this, since this is, um, the doctors are volunteering their time, is that correct? The doctors, everyone is a volunteer. I'm the only paid employee through uh, Henry Ford Wyandotte. And everybody else is a volunteer, which makes it a really great place to work because people really care about helping other people. And the doctors are just great. They're all board certified and I have one retired physician, Dr. Murray, who knows probably two-thirds of the people that come into the clinic he's taking care of their their families and uh, their kids mm -hmm. at one time or another and um, the other doctors I have Dr. Angel and Dr. Bush and many other doctors that um, dedicate their time to helping out. So approximately how many doctors would you say volunteer their time with the clinic? I have um, probably about 20 physicians that okay. rotate. Some only come once in a great while. Somebody like Dr. Angel comes every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So as often as they can be there, they're, they try to. Okay, that's great. So there's the doctors that volunteer their times, and I assume you also have other staff, like are there nurses that are there We have to some help nurses, out? and we have, um, actually we have medical students and residents who rotate through 
um, they aren't really considered volunteer, but the doctor, Dr. Lemansky, who runs the medical education program at the hospital, felt like it was important enough for them to get this extra experience with patients. Um, right. so, so they're able to actually get hands-on training. We have uh, nurse practitioner students from Wayne State who work with physicians and help learn their skills. And we have, uh, in, through the health careers um, schools and one that Henry Ford has as well um, through a health, uh, an adult health careers program, they learn. And then I have some other volunteers, like some of the uh, hospital auxilians help out um, and other people who are just interested in doing a little volunteer work. The, our problem right now is we don't have very much space for volunteers to work. We are transplanted into an area that's well used um, with bariatric surgery and the uh, OB Gen Clinic that's over in the same building. So we are using that space when they are not, and they're very busy. Okay. Uh, so we, we are in the process of trying to find additional space. Okay, so you're looking for a different place with the with more space so you can take on more volunteers. And if somebody was a medi medical professional that did want to assist you, uh, what would they need to do to assist at the clinic? Well, they can contact us, and the contact information is on our website. Um, they can also contact the hospital because the Henry Ford Wyandotte Hospital has agreed to do our um, sort of volunteer indoctrination. They can get an ID badge and they'll do their, uh, check their references and uh, it's something they've sort of volunteered to do for us so that it doesn't take away from our time in the clinic. So either, either place they can go to the Henry Ford Wyandotte website or our own website and get the information. Okay, great. And you do, like you said, you take volunteers of all different levels, so even if it's somebody with no medical background that just wants to help out, those people can be accommodated as well. Exactly. Well, that's great. So how many patients would you say you see come through the clinic on a yearly basis? Last year we saw, we saw um, 2,300 patient visits, and that was about 1,700 patients. So some came back more than once. Um, but we, we are at capacity right now. There's a bit of a, maybe a four to six week waiting period to see a physician but we're hoping to clear that up if we can get a little bit more space. Okay, and so if, if somebody uh, wanted to come to your clinic as a patient, what do they do? Well, they can call us and make an appointment. And if they meet those criteria that we talked about, they're at least 18, they're working, they have no other insurance, they can be seen, they can schedule an appointment. And I'd like to stress not to wait till you absolutely need to see the doctor. You might wanna think about that ahead of time and schedule right. a first visit. Okay, and the typical first visit would just be like an overall physical for people just because they probably haven't been to the doctor exactly. in a while. And then let, and let, let the doctor know what their problems are and the doctor can kind of go from there. Right. Now how does it work if a patient, like let's say a patient comes in and the doctor felt that they needed to get other tests like x-rays or ultrasounds, is that something that you guys are affiliated with the hospital where that can be done That's for very free? common, that's very okay. common and there's no charge to the patient. Um, if the doctor feels it's appropriate and they need to have those screenings done, Henry Ford Wyandotte has been a partner with us in helping us um, get those screenings done without charge to the patient. We also, um, I might mention, we do the women's annual physicals mm -hmm. as well. So they can get uh, a free uh, pelvic and pap test at no charge to them. We also participate with the Yes Man program, which a lot of people in Wyandotte are familiar with, the free mammogram screening uh, program for uh, patients without insurance. Okay, that's great. So, uh, you know, it, it, doctors were noticing it seemed like that would be one of the first things that comes off the budget when the economic squeeze is on. Mm -hmm. Women do not take care of themselves. They were taking care of everybody else first. So we want to make sure that they get those tests done. There's no reason to put it off now. We'll schedule them. Great. Now as far as I know you mentioned that diabetes is a, a big concern. Um, do you do any <coughs> education then for the patients? Do you offer any classes like diabetes education classes or anything like that? Right now we have uh, a registered dietitian that comes in and works with the patients on appointment. In the past we've had classroom uh, 
availability to have the large group classes. Um, and we'd like to get back to that again. But right now, patients can speak one-on-one -on -one with a nutritionist and find out you know, how to best work their diets so that it helps them. Great, so you have uh, regular primary care physicians uh, that are there. You have a nutritionist that's there. Do you have any other specialists that We do. We have uh, a cardiologist that comes in. Once they've been screened by the primary care doctor, a uh, cardiologist will come in uh, uh, when we need them. Um, usually it's about once every two months and they will and we can also refer to cardiologists as well to get some um, cardiology testing done if the doctor thinks that that's necessary um, we have podiatry every two weeks that will do the diabetic foot exams and if you're having a problem with your feet in general you don't need to be a diabetic but the podiatrist will help with that and then of course we have the uh, the OB-GYN doctor we don't do prenatal care but we do the gynecology screenings. Okay, great. So it really does sound like Don River's best kept secret as far as you know, healthcare. <laughs> Except for that we're so busy, but right. yes, we have so many people every week that come in to see us, they're new mm -hmm. patients, and they go, you know, I just heard about this place, or my, you know, a neighbor told me, or a co worker. And, um, and it's really great. I'm happy to be part of it. Yeah, it sounds like a wonderful service that's offered to the community, especially you know, people that fit into that category where they are working, but unfortunately they just don't have, you know, the insurance and they don't make enough money to be able to pay for this on their own. So. Right, and there's a lot of people that fit in that category. It's unfortunate, and maybe someday it won't be that way, but right now we're, we're lucky that we're able to provide it. Mm -hmm. And I know, like, people are wondering, like, how can, how can, everybody afford to do this and obviously the doctors are volunteering their time the staff is volunteering their time and you had mentioned that there are some grants that you guys get to obviously pay for some of these tests so can you talk a little bit about that um, the grant funding right one of the first grants that we got and we've gotten it every year and actually I just did my application this morning was the Blue Cross Blue Shield Foundation safety net grant and that um, that's been just a godsend to us to keep going and be able to provide our services that we provide um, every year they donate this year it'll probably be ten thousand dollars and it might be extra ten thousand for uh, dental uh, mm -hmm. care that'll be something new that we'll be able to offer um, won't be for probably won't be able to offer it to a large amount of people right away but those who really need it will probably be able to be seen by a dentist and then Henry Ford Wyandotte has been extremely in the system as well has been extremely generous in helping us with um, you know, provide the diagnostic testing, mm -hmm. and also the annual golf outing. Uh, for a couple of years, we received funding from them. And again, this year, I've heard that we're going to receive, I don't know what the funding is, but anything will be welcome. Great. So again, if people are wanting to become a patient, or if you know somebody that uh, might benefit from going to the clinic, you can go to their website, um, which we'll bring up on our screen, and we'll also have it at the end of the show. Um, and if you just wanted to volunteer, or if you know a medical professional that's interested in volunteering, or even somebody that's not a medical professional, you guys can use volunteers as well at the clinic. So Absolutely. It's really great like I said, we have a little bit of a space crunch right now, but in the future, I don't want any of the volunteers or people who want to volunteer to forget about us, because eventually uh, there will be a place for them. Um, as well as at our event that's coming up. Yep, and we want to talk about that event. You guys do have an event that's, that's coming up. This is an expo that you're putting on your first one, so why don't you tell the viewers a little bit about this event, when it is, where it's going to be? Well, the expo will be July, uh, Saturday morning, July 27th, and it'll start at the Yak Arena, and it'll be a, um, associated with that will be a 5K or one mile walk or run, and you can find more information about that on our website. Um, we, the inside the expo at the Yak, which will open at 8.30 in the morning, uh, we'll have different screenings and different information about uh, just taking some easy steps to, uh, towards a more fit lifestyle. Okay. So the expo, I want to say, it's all free, correct? All free. All the screenings that are there are free. Yes. So what type of screenings can people get? Well, I know they'll be doing blood pressures and uh, diabetes screenings, cholesterol, and glaucoma screenings, and hopefully foot screenings for diabetic care. Um, and then there will be presentations about 
how to start to exercise, uh, making the right food choices. And Patty, you're going to be there. Yep, that's right. Doing a presentation, and I I believe we'll have um, demonstrations uh, for yoga and Pilates and Tai Chi and some of the e I don't want to say easier exercises, but gentler exercises mm -hmm. for people who maybe haven't exercised in a while. Right, or people who have some conditions or joint issues that may prevent them from doing regular aerobic type exercises. So, exactly. So easier exercises. And um, so, yeah, you have demonstrations. Um, like you had mentioned, I'm actually going to be speaking there as well. I'm going to be speaking on taking charge of your health on a budget. Um, I think I'll be speaking around 11 o'clock. Um, and I know you're lining up some other people as well. Now, uh, who are some of the vendors that you have coming? We're lining up. Um, Blue Cross Blue Shield will be there, and they will be doing something with food and exercise. Mm -hmm. HAP will be there uh, doing a food presentation. Uh, we have the YMCA, hopefully, and I have Total Health and mm -hmm. WINDOT. They'll be there. Uh, I have a couple of schools that have expressed interest uh, about health careers, um, and we'll see how that works out. Great. And Southgate Surgery Center will be there. Mm -hmm. So just a variety of vendors that are related to health and wellness, um, anything that you know, helps people feel better. And so that you still do have some openings for I some vendors. I do have some openings right? for vendors or sponsors. Uh, if you like our mission and you want to sp help sponsor our event or our run or our walk, there's opportunity for that, and that information is on our website. Great. And yeah. This is our first time, so I'm not sure, but we just, you know, the way this idea came up was, we feel like not enough people may know about what we offer at the clinic. And mm -hmm. even if they did know, they might not be able to get an appointment right away. So this will be a day where maybe a lot of people can get screened for some serious illnesses and it won't cost them anything and we'll be able to help a lot of people all in one day. Hopefully it'll become an annual event. That's great. So it's, it's you not only do you have the clinic, now you're finding another way to reach out to the community and to offer those services to more people that you wouldn't be able to get to necessarily right away. Or some people that maybe they don't want to set a full appointment, they can just come in and get some screenings and make sure that everything is, is good and then exactly. say, okay, I'll exactly. come and get it next year again, hopefully. Absolutely. So. And if they are having a problem, maybe we'll pinpoint it soon enough that they can get some treatment right away. Right. And so again, the event is Saturday, July 27th. And it's at the Yak Arena, and you said it starts at 8.30, goes till 2 o'clock, is that two correct? 2 o'clock, yes. And it starts with the 5K one-mile run walk. Um, and if people wanted to register for that, do they do that the day of the event, or can they do that in advance? They can do it in advance. It's on, uh, the information's on our website. They can also uh, register ahead of time or at the day of the event. I also want to mention that I do need volunteers. If, if someone does not want to participate in the walk or run, I need course people on the on the on the road race course to help point the runners and walkers along the path so I'm looking for a lot of volunteers for that okay great so if you want to volunteer for the event you can contact Nancy um, at the clinic and like I said the information will be brought up at the end of the show so I want to um, thank you again Nancy for coming out and talking to us today and getting the information out about the clinic and about the event too. I think it's going to be a great event. And I, I think it will and I want to thank you for the opportunity. That's no problem. So I want to again remind people that no matter the cards you were dealt or your current state of health, you have the power to take charge of your health. So never give up and never stop learning. The solution you seek may be just around the corner. For more information on the Wyandotte Clinic for their working uninsured, you can go to their website. Um, also, for information on their event, please go to their website. And for more additional uh, healthy living tips and tricks, you can go to my website at www.veggiepatty.com. I'd like to ask you, Nancy, to join me in a toast to the viewers. Oh, happy to do it. So, <clears throat> we have our lovely green drinks here again, healthy cucumber juice. So I want to uh, wish all of the viewers that are watching at home or anywhere else you may be watching um, from all of us here at the studio to all of you we wish you a wonderful today and an even better tomorrow here's to your health